pasti mati dia. Kamu harus pergi. Pergi dari sini. Di sini banyak darah. Saya sudah meminta kamu untuk pergi di tempat ini. Kenapa kamu masih di sini? Welcome back. Today I will recap part 2 of a 2022 Indonesia horror mystery film named Tumble Kanjeng Iblis. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. We then see Tia leaving the lodge, when she notices Rosa bringing a pregnant woman to work there. Tia gets a text from Nina, and she begins leaving. She finds Rosa in front of her who asks her where she is going this late at night with a backpack. Tia says she was going to see her cousin but now she's going back inside because she just cancelled. She then knocks on Nina's door but gets no reply from her, and only then she notices Nathan standing in the hallway. He begins moving towards her, but when she looks there, there is no one there. Meanwhile, we see that Rosa and Jeffrey had killed the pregnant woman and extracted her fetus. She then brings the fetus to her child and offers it to him, which he immediately takes and starts eating happily, and Rosa says that soon you two will be like Nathan and you won't have to stay in the dark. Later. She tells Jeffrey that their child is in their control, so they can forward the ritual. Meanwhile, Tia hears that old lady announcing that Rosa's annual event is forwarded, so they must leave this house, and they can come back the day after tomorrow. She then gets a call from the hospital, and they inform her that her dad is constantly hysterical and he keeps calling out her name. They have tried every possible treatment but his wounds are getting worse and are invested by maggots now. Only then someone knocks on her window, and she finds Nathan there who asks her to follow him. She comes out looking for him, where he says he told her to leave this place, so why hasn't she left? She asks him what he knows about the curse and why he is telling her to leave. To which he says he knows she came here to look for her sister Putri, and an old man must have brought her to this place. Just like what you did to Putri, here we see that the man with red eyes was watching her when she went to see the house, and the bike taxi rider was also a member of that cult. She asks him where is Putri now, to which he tells her that they made her a sacrifice and she is dead just like what they are going to do to Nina, and she might end up the same if she doesn't leave this place soon. He then says that dad did the right thing to leave this place and tell her to get away from here if she wants to be alive. She asks him how he knows about dad, to which he makes her unconscious and says he failed to protect Putri, but he can't fail her too. Tia then finds herself in front of that strange door, and this time, it opens, and she hears her sister calling her for help. She enters the room and finds her sister there sitting on a chair crying for help, and suddenly an almara there starts shaking loudly. She then gets spooked to see her sister there in a demonic form, and then she encounters the red-eyed man, who tells her that her family owes him. But it turns out to be a nightmare and she wakes up in a bus. She then finds a return ticket and behind it is written to ignore the dreams and get away from here. However, she gets terrified seeing that red-eyed man there who tells her to find her family. Meanwhile, we see Janu telling everyone to leave, as the whole family is gathering soon. However, Tia returns and sneaks into the lodge, and she moves the almara of her room behind which she finds something written. She learns that Rosa and Yusuf made a deal with the devil, and they have a child named Nathan, and after Yusuf left there, she did the same ritual with Jeffrey, and they has a child named Abdi. On the other hand, Nathan tries to kill himself with that dagger, but Rosa stops him, and as he gets up, she punishes him saying Kinjang had given him life, and he betrayed her. Nathan says this devil's chain must be broken, and she, her husband, and that devil's child should burn in hell. Later, we see Rosa and that old lady preparing for the ritual to sacrifice Nina, and meanwhile, Tia finds that red-eyed man entering Rosa's room, and she goes after him with a knife. Here Rosa begins the ritual by reciting that spell, and during this, Tia finds her dad's photo with Rosa. Rosa asks for Ken Zheng's wisdom, and says they are doing this ritual ahead of time that he has decided. She asks him to accept the offering, and only then Ken Zheng appears there in front of them. Here the door of Abdi's room opens on its own. Tia enters the room and finds it filled with toys, and only then she gets spooked to see that demonic child there. Rosa then also comes there in her demonic form, and says now she understands the reason why Nathan wants to save her. She then lifts her in the air and says Yusuf should have not left this place. Her mother, Putri, and she is suffering because of that hypocritical nonsense. Now before she could kill her, Jeffrey comes there to stop her, causing Tia to fall down. He tries to calm her down and says it's enough, and then he goes to his son to tell him that tonight Ken Zheng will get two perfect sacrifices. One for them, and one for him. He then ties her up in the storeroom, where they already have Nathan tied up, and he says all of Yusuf's offspring must die. Outside, the old lady tells that red-eye man that their plan is not to let Tia go again, to which he says he will talk to Tia, and she should take care of it inside. Meanwhile, 
Nathan tells Tia that he is the son of Rosa and Yusuf. The result of their ritual with Kenjang was perfected at the cost of many people's lives. This is a devil's chain, and now they are going to do it again for their son. Here that old lady tells Janu to free Nathan from this curse immediately. Janu goes to them and grabs that dagger from there, and as he was about to kill him, Tia tries to stop him. Nathan says it's not his job to explain everything, and then he tells Janu to kill him. Now as Janu slits his throat, Rosa gets hurt there, and she says something has happened to Nathan. Jeffrey tells her to hold on as relatives are coming, so they have to finish this soon. Meanwhile, Kenjang appears there and drags away Nathan's body and eats him. Later, the red-eyed man comes to her and tells her that he guided her here, and he was also the one who took Putri to come here, but how unfortunate that she refused the honors they offered her. Both of them are already bound to Kenjang Iblis, and it all started with their father. When they were young, Yusuf and Rosa made a pact with Kenjang Iblis and formed a new sect to obtain wealth and perfection. Rosa became greedy and sacrificed so many young girls, but Yusuf didn't like that. So he left Rosa. He wanted to be normal to turn back time and love and grow with her mother. But leaving Kenjang only made him suffer because of the curse, and that curse will follow all of his offspring, until her sister who had turned 20 finally became a sacrifice. She can change that fate and also be a reformer of the Kenjang Iblis sect. He then begins reciting that spell, and she begins to get possessed, but she sees Yusuf there telling her not to do it. Meanwhile, Jeffrey and Rosa with their extended family bring Nina out for sacrifice. They all then kneel down and begins reciting that spell to summon Kenjang. After a while, finally Kenjang comes there, and Rosa requests him to honor them. Kenjang bends over Nina and takes out her soul, but Rosa and Jeffrey get shocked to see that they are not healed. Tia's body then comes there levitating in the air, and Rosa realizes that everyone has betrayed her. The old lady tell Kenjang that they offer him what he really wants, and then Kenjang enters into Tia's body, due to which she becomes their master. She takes out Rosa and Jeffrey's soul and consumes it, and then everyone kneels before her. Meanwhile, Yusuf also dies, and he also gets dragged by the demon. One year later, we see that Tia is now the owner of that lodge and she welcomes Irene, a new student there. She shows her the same room where she used to live, and probably she will continue the rituals by sacrificing young girls now, or she will find a way to end the curse. Tumble Kinjang Iblis doesn't just present the ritual story of a sect. However, behind all the stories given seem to be close to the phenomena taking place around us. Still many people perform rituals with their own purposes and desires. Before this movie was released, through the official Instagram account Tumble Kinjang Devil shared information about heretical cults whose existence is close to us. In fact, not only in Indonesia. There are also many sects abroad with many followers. Tumble Kinjang Iblis doesn't necessarily just present rituals but also spice up a heartwarming family movie. Struggle, sacrifice, and willingness to give up are also important points in this film. The director wants to express any moral message that feels close to the community. One of them is children who migrate to other people's cities to study and work. Regarded as boarding children, they are suitable targets for sacrifice or even influence to want to join their cult. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.